agro processing has um, a fairly long journey ahead of it here. Uh, it is known that most of our produce is uh, damaged because of post-harvest uh, management problems. And, um, you know, we have a lot to learn, even as practicing farmers, on how to harvest and store. And the best storage of, is, of, is, of course, to add value and then preserve. A lot of these uh, will, will, will take a while to, have to, 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 to master here because of the challenges of infrastructure like power. And even ordinary knowledge of what to do. Even the bags we use in storing grains now are no longer allowed anywhere else in the world. Packaging first of the raw produce is a major problem. The polypropylene bags do not allow any air. So the seeds develop, begin to sweat within the bag. And then they gather mold. And the mold generates aflatoxin. And aflatoxin generates cancer. If you put cotton in, in polypropylene bags and try to ship them to Europe, they dump them in the sea. Now Nigeria was a major producer of jute bags, but the two factories shut down. Uh, there was one in Jos and one in Badagri. So now we import all our jute bags from uh, Serb, uh, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. There are certain hours of the day that are not good for harvesting crops. They should pick them up if it's bananas or mangoes, at about 6, 7 a.m. before the ambient temperature begins to rise, they'll stay longer. Package them. All those also have rules because of problems of, uh, of uh, contamination. Of vegetable temperatures are usually 12 degrees Fahrenheit. Not frozen, huh? but not too warm. And then you can take your tomatoes from uh, Meduguri to Lagos under those conditions. But if they're in baskets, one sitting on the other, they're getting crushed. The weather is very rough for them. And by the time they get to Lagos, the shelf life is bad. Electricity, or machinery, the right kind of machinery. You can't start using uh, galvanized sheets and, uh, because the rust will get into the food and then you know, poison you because ferrous oxide is dangerous for the stomach. Electricity to supply power, then packaging and storage again electricity because you need cold rooms. Uh, these, and then marketing because of the cost of credit here. Uh, um, electricity costs, you're running a generator. Uh, uh, staff uh, uh, inefficiency sometimes because you need to train these fellows. And the other point is that there are no local farm managers here. Most people who have set up big farms have had to go abroad to go and find managers from Israel or China or India. Uh, they never stay long, and when they do stay, they get too costly. Look at it. You spend almost $22 billion a year importing food. I mean, it's madness. Why are you importing rice? They're working hard on it. Uh, I, must, I must give credit to the minister, giving improved seeds to people and so on. But there are not enough farmers going, producing what they call paddy, the raw rice for the processors to buy. So many processors are still importing rice paddy from foreign countries to come and mill here. We send our hard-earned dollars to sustain other economies by bringing back things we have no reason to import. We put too much pressure on the Naira because every Nigerian is looking for dollars. And then the, the Naira depletes and our currency weak, gets weaker. And we keep talking about looking for jobs and talking about unemployment at home. Last year, a newspaper in the UK called a magazine called Tatley reported that Nigeria imported champagne worth 145 million pounds sterling. You have fruits. You can convert to champagne here. Your pineapples are wasting, your, your, your cola nuts and so on. But no. And if, if you want to go in and compete, you run into a mountain, a, mountain a, a range of mountains of problems. Your interest rate is between 25 and 35 percent, and has remained so for the last 29 years. When we had this structural adjustment program, which Europe dumped on Africa, 
with Kofi Annan, uh, Kofi Annan's advisor on the economy, Jeffrey Sachs, and Paul Krugman, an American winner of the Nobel Prize in Economics, condemned as the worst assault on Africa since, since the slave trade. Today, they're still forcing us to sign agreements which make us the producer of raw materials to avoid us competing because they know we have a large market. I doubt if any young person who goes into agriculture will stay there long. What you have sold will not in any way match your investment. Because first, the yield per hectare here is very poor. Well, an American farmer is doing 15 to 18 tons of maize per hectare. We managed to do two here. The quality of seed, the way we plant. Farmers here do almost one meter apart. So the yield is hopeless. So many things are there, but there is still not enough seriousness at the state and local government level. I've heard uh, a presidential flag bearer talking about agriculture steadily. We intend to get serious about it, very serious, uh, and do sp spread out and deepen the business far more than what we have now. The current minister is trying, seriously, but that's a long way to go. In another five or six years, the cost of importing wheat into Nigeria will be $10 billion per annum. We can't afford it. The six northern states, bordering Chad, Niger, and so on, have a climate that can, can produce wheat. And there are many, many dams and lakes around there. So let's grow the wheat. We need to invest more in agri. We'll have to study it more. And government must come in heavily helping the would-be farmer. Dams, land clearing, improved seeds for higher yield, harvesting techniques. I've just brought in some machines from China, tiny machines for harvesting rice. I've even brought machines from China now for planting groundnuts and harvesting groundnuts. Because one hectare of groundnuts will take a family of 12, at least two weeks to harvest. All these things have contributed towards reducing or making uh, totally uh, invisible the famous groundnut pyramids in Kano. They are no longer there because the farmers are averagely about my age. So agriculture is actually declining because we haven't provided adequate and relevant technology to support it. Mm -hmm.